What up there, it's Wobots Tail for this mud. Today we're moving on to gold and um, also other fine details. So the colors you're gonna need are Abaddon Black, Mechanicus Standard Gray, Xandri Dust, Rune Lord Brass, and what else did I use? I uh, used a little bit of Lead Belcher. Uh, Steel Legion Drab, did I call that one? Here we go. Steel Legion Drab. So uh, stay tuned and when we get done, your guys should have all of their las guns painted up with all the silvers and all the golds and then all their uh, details, most of the details on their armor and their um, bodies all sorted out. Oh, one more thing you're gonna need, Morn Fang Brown for the pouches and the belts. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Probably more gentlemen than ladies, although there might be one or two of you out there. We're gonna move on with uh, video number two on how to paint a Vestroyan Firstborn. And the color we're gonna start with is, uh, we're gonna get onto the metallics. So, oh, hello. Hello, hello. There we go. So we're gonna get started with the metallics and the first color that I found really uh, is the best to go with when attempting to tackle the metallics on this model is uh, the two primary colors you're gonna use are Lead Belcher and Rune Lord Brass. So we're gonna start with Lead Belcher first, and that's the silver color. And shake it up, give it a good little shake, shake, shake. This very dark, dark kind of iron looking metallic silver. So I'm gonna paint onto the blade here. Most of these models have bayonets. So when painting the bayonets, Everything is always kind of consistent. You paint the little lug for the bayonet under the Aquila back here. And you paint the blade itself. And then we're painting the barrel of the last gun. And these other parts like the skull, the hilt of the, the bayonet, the housing or this binding thing we're going to paint in gold <clears throat> but for now all of these rifles las guns are going to be the same so the binding is mostly going to be in brass but the silver parts are this binding here and this part of the scope and this bright binding here it's a little bit different than the white dwarf i think the games workshop color scheme has this binding in brass and this bottom part in silver, but I thought if it was silver, then you don't really see the silver of the uh, power pack down here, the magazine. So that's what I want to paint silver. So that's what we're painting. So in silver on all the LAS guns, it's always consistent. The power pack, the scope, this upper binding here, the binding that goes down and around the bottom. And also a lot of these LAS guns have these I'm not even sure what these things are over here on the left side of the las gun, close to the body. I'm not sure what that is, but I always paint these in lead belcher as well. We'll do the bindings in brass, but paint the whole thing in silver mostly. Now, when working across the model, we want to be consistent with the following things. The fingers for all these gauntlets are going to be done in silver. I think all of them, no matter what the model is, has helmeted, or not helmeted, but gloved hands. So, silver on all of the fingers, and then silver on the breastplate and the chain mail, or the scale mail of the armor. Some of the Games Workshop ones, you look, it's a little bit different, but um, for me, I found that it's more uh, cohesive. They all kind of match together if you, you paint them all kind of similar colors. So all the scale, like the scale of this guy is a lot different from the scale or the chain mail of this trooper here. And that's different from uh, the scale on 
this guy over there, but I, I kind of paint all of them in silver. The back of the breastplate, the grenades, all, are also getting painted in lead belcher. Used to be a time in the 90s when a lot of the uh, these frag grenades, the ones that look like pineapples, were painted in like bright green. I think if you look at some of the old Talarn or Mordian or a lot of the old models for the Imperial Guard and even the Space Marines, like the Blood Angel Space Marines, they weren't silver, they weren't black, they were this bright green color. I never really understood it. So that's that. Oh, we're also painting in silver the... I have no idea what this is. It's like a air air pack. I guess if you have a gas mask or something. It's like a it's like a charge for your armor, power pack for your armor, battery pack for your armor. I don't know. And the uh, last thing, some of these guys have holsters here with pistols in them. So the butt of the pistol is going to get the lead belcher paint. Okay? So most of these guys have generally the same thing. Scale mail down here. The las gun, which always get painted the same. Breastplates. Uh, if they're breastplates, like this guy on Uncle Vanya here, if you can see it on the front, then you will paint the breastplate, their armor, in silver, like so. Uh, as well as the back, silver, like so. And then sometimes their, their power packs are in different places, like this guy. His power pack is down here on his waist and not on the, uh, in the middle of his back. So again, we're just painting the silvers. Let me double check all these other guys. Yeah, like this guy, his scale mail is gonna get the same treatment. Or his chain mail, whatever this is, his armor. Same treatment, just brushing that silver on just like that. Okay, and then I'll do the fingers, the uh, rifle a little bit later. This guy in particular, this gas mask guy, he's got this um, tube leading from his his power pack, we'll just paint the whole thing. So we'll paint the power pack, the chain mail back here, under his arm, all the way down, chain mail down here. And then he's got this like wire or tube leading from the bottom of his power pack down to his left hip. And there's like a silver chain, or what I paint silver, this chain that's hanging from his belt, kind of holding the wire or the tubing in place. So you want to paint that in lead belcher as well. It's pretty good. It allows you to not, not really worry about mixing up the paints too much. And we'll get to specialist weapons in a bit. We're still looking at regular infantry guys. This guy's got another breastplate, so you just do it in silver. Uh, silver, silver, silver. This guy's got this weird, it's like a scroll case here at his waist. So. Let's see, we painted, we're painting the silver on his las gun, the binding here, the binding in the back, and then you get to this part under his armor, under his red sleeve, and it's like a scroll case right there. So we're painting that in silver, in lead belcher right there. Okay, and yeah, this guy's the same as everybody else. Got some chainmail on the bottom, the breastplate on the back, the uh, power pack unit here on his back. So we'll paint that in lead belcher. Um, okay, this guy, Uncle Vanya aiming. He's a little bit different because you see what I mean. Once you kind of understand where everything is on these models, they're always going to be in the same places. So you can kind of um, be secure about where things are going to be. He's got two frag grenades here, so we'll paint them both in silver. You want to get under his arm here. He's got chainmail on his on his front, so you want to paint that chainmail. And then he's got these two links of chain leading down to a skull. I like to paint that skull in brass or in gold, so I do like to paint the chain in silver. So that's what I'll do. And he's got silver fingers. So we'll come back through the rest of that in just a bit. Uh, power pack, scale mail, or chain mail on his back. He's got a knife, his bayonet, and um, we're just going to leave that for now because all of this is going to be in gold. All of the details on that is going to be in gold. 
His you can see even better than others because the rifle is up and kind of braced into his shoulder. You can kind of see where the uh, this kind of the binding on the back and the side is, along with whatever this piece is, this tubing. So we're just gonna paint that in silver for now, and then paint that. all the silver parts like that and then this is the part where i said in part one if you make any mistakes with the mustache color or the flesh this is where we clean over it now with the silver paint anything that got onto the las gun okay and here is the charge pack again one more time you want to make sure you get every single angle of it so no matter which way somebody who's picking up your model turns it they'll always see the paint in the correct spot pet peeve of mine making sure that the paint is in all the right spots here's the last guy oh, okay for gas mask guys let's talk about gas mask guys uh, he this guy also has a pistol and a holster so we're gonna paint that um, he's got scale mail a grenade, power pack. For gas masks, what I like to do is give the whole gas mask a base coat of lead belcher. This includes the breathing tubes that protrude out the side of the gas mask. Okay, so you want to make sure you get every single angle of those breathing tubes. So here's this guy. One more infantry guy who's got a gas mask. So you paint his face up, paint up the silver tubing on either side, and it's gonna go into his power pack here in the back. So yeah, that's what this gotta be. What this this little thing in the back has to be for to power the uh, rebreathers, the gas masks that the Australians sometimes wear. All right, now moving on to the special weapons, you'll see that a lot of the special weapons guys and snipers and even sergeants have these funky gas masks. So, for this guy, Grenade Launcher Dude, I'm gonna start by painting his gas mask. Painting the tubing here. And the chainmail on the front. Now with the grenade launcher, it's a little bit different because the, the weapon itself is different. So we're not gonna worry about the binding in the back. We do wanna hit the fingers of his gauntlet. Trigger housing, which is gonna be in silver. Uh, for the majority of the weapon, it's gonna be silver with gold detailing. So we're gonna paint the drum here in silver. We're also going to paint the handle up here and the barrel in silver. Here we get to the back, painting the barrel. Uh, we're also going to be painting, if you can, get to the shells. The heads of the shells are going to be in silver. So let's just paint this whole, all this guy's silver here at once. He's got silver chainmail. We paint his power pack in the back. Silver chainmail. Um, yeah, and then the tops right there of his grenades. Also, for any of your guys, if they have skulls on their hats, I usually paint the skulls in silver. If they have Aquilas or double headed eagles, then I paint those in gold or brass. I'm kind of developing this fluff for my destroying army since I don't really have any any guide to go by that it's like their mark of seniority or experience status within the unit. If they have a silver skull then it shows that they were in the unit for a long time. If they've got a golden Aquila 
then it shows that they have experience in uh, leadership or un undeniable bravery against the enemy. So just because you've been you've been fighting in the unit for a long time, like this guy has, he's been doing his duty and he's been doing everything that the empire emperor has asked of him. But if there was somebody, say, like this, like this guy, he's got a silver, or he's got a Aquila on his head that we will paint gold, shows that he took leadership or had uncommon valor and bravery in battle. So it's much more cooler to look at. <clears throat> All right, now going to our flamer guy. The flamer guy, you'll probably have more experience painting because he comes in the infantry squad. So let's look at his stuff. He's got gloves, so we'll paint gauntleted hands. All of the bindings are going to be in metal, so I paint that one down down here at the bottom of the uh, handguard in silver. I also paint the um, gas tank there in silver. This is just like almost like a las gun, so it's got the same kind of design for the the main part. So silver, silver, silver for here, silver for the chest, silver for the gas mask. I want to make sure you get the rims, the edges of the eyes, right by the goggles, the lenses. And you want to make sure that you get the tubing. Going all the way to the back, the tubing kind of goes almost directly right into the uh, power unit for his rebreather. So we're just going to paint that. A little bit of scale mail in the back. And then he's got this giant canister, right, of Prometheum. So. The band we're going to paint in gold, but the tank itself, you want to give a nice even layer of lead, or yeah, lead belcher. And okay, that's it for that guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all the silvers. You might find some of these guys also have silver, or also have skulls or aquilas on their boots. This guy's got an aquila, double-headed eagle. Let's see if we can find the silver skull. Here, this guy, Young Uncle Vanya, has got silver skulls on his boots. So we're going to paint those in silver. All you have to do is um, lead belcher. You're, you're going to need to get just a little bit of it, put it on the tip of your brush. Because these skulls are so small and they're surrounded by brown leather, you don't want to put too much. So just a dab there. Make sure that when you turn the model, like if you're looking at it from behind, then there's like a little bit of a side area that you have to get around like that. And here on this side, here on this side, the front, the tops of the skulls, and there you go. Okay, so I'm going to go away now and I'm going to paint all of the silver on, um, on these guys. Alright, next thing we're going to do is um, paint up some straps. So these elbow guards have straps on them, so we're going to paint them with steel, leech, and drab. There's a couple of things besides the straps, actually, but the most prominent thing is... Let's see if we can find them. Here, yeah, so you see these elbow armor pieces right on the front, almost completely hidden. You've got these straps. So we're gonna paint that there. They're a little bit hard to see, so you're probably going to have to use a piece of cork and some blue tack in order to get the angle on them. And then also check the back, because sometimes on the backs too, depending on the model, you're going to have straps there too. So each model has them. You just have to find 
find them. Oops. Now, as well, I'm gonna get onto the rest of them. Um, but you've also got this model here, Uncle Vanya aiming who's got a kind of like a cloth gauntlet right here. So I also paint this in Steel Legion Drab. Most of the gauntlets we're gonna paint are metal and we're gonna paint them in gold, but this we're gonna paint as if it is like heavy duty leather, I guess. This guy is the only one. Again, here, strap for the elbow guard. Underneath, you gotta look really hard. This guy doesn't have an elbow guard on his right arm though. So, that's nice, one less thing to worry about. And the great thing about it is if you make a mistake, because we already painted the red underneath, say you make a mistake, like here, I've got a little bit of brown onto the red of the coat, or of the sleeve. You just take some of on red and paint it right over. And there you go. So I'm gonna go on and paint the other three infantry guys. Let's take a look at our heavy weapons guys. Heavy weapons grenade launcher guy also has straps on his on his uh, elbow armor. So we will paint those up. And flamer guy as well has straps on his elbow armor. Okay, so we'll paint those and we'll be right back. Okay, in the next section we're going to use Mornfang Brown to paint up all the pouches. So I did an example on this one model. Here he's got uh, a pouch in the front. Now you want to be careful because of the, the front of these figures. A lot of them have pouches that are barely kind of peeking out. And um, it's kind of, kind of crazy with the detail. So you just want to make sure you get that pouch there. Um, a lot of them have pouches on their waist. This guy's got his pouches slung over in like a like a bandolier. So I found the easiest way to paint these pouches is to start from the bottom, paint all the bottoms, make sure you've got them all the bottoms painted. Then do all the sides, the left and the right sides. Make sure you get in there and focus on each one. And that is because if you just slap paint all over the place, it's really easy to miss like all of the sides and all the details and you don't want to do that i'm like a completionist i always want to make sure i get everything then you paint the fronts all the fronts of these patches and then the tops and then you want, just want to do like a, a once over just turn the model in your hand make sure that you've got all the angles covered so we are going to be doing that with all of our pouches now you've also got holsters and small little little packs that are bigger than pouches on the fronts here next to the canteens. So like this guy, Young Vanya, you want to just paint up the front because that's the biggest surface area. Then the sides here, make sure you get into all the crevices. And then the bottom and bada bing bada boom. Um, then pistol holsters like Young Vanya here has a pistol holster. He's packing heat! So we paint the front, then the sides, then the bottom. Again, we're getting all the surface areas. It's uh, something that a lot of people don't really think about. You just slap paint on it and kind of swish it around with the tip of the brush and expect that it's gonna go everywhere. But yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful. So some of your guys also have this, straps on the back. 
straps and belts. So we're going to paint the flat surface area that is peeking out at us. Now we're going to paint the uh, any like tops, bottoms, parts, figures that we could see. The thing is, it's really easy to paint the the front of something, and then you forget that if you turn the model just ever so slightly, you would be looking at it from a different angle. So it's really easy to miss. Like if you're looking down at the model, it's really easy to miss painting the top part of the strap, like right here. So you want to make sure you get all of the surface areas. And again, the reason we're doing this now is because we didn't want to paint the straps on before we painted the metal, the silver of the breastplate. It would have been a lot harder to get to. He's got a pouch on his waist next to the grenade. So we are going to paint the side, the front, opposite side, bottom, and top. Boom. So those are basically the two kinds of guys you're going to run across uh, on this uh, on this stage. You've got more guys here with pouches and belts. Uh, this guy's also got a pouch here on the front that you're going to paint. Pouches on the front of their breastplate. Always check for on the front of their breastplate do they have pouches um, right on the front. Okay, and with our two special weapons guys, we've got pouches on the front, the flamer, um, pouches all around the back. He's carrying a lot of food. He's carrying a lot of rations. And this guy, not so much. Just a couple of pouches on the back for the grenade launcher. All right, so I'm gonna go paint those pouches up. We'll be right back. Look at this, you guys. 116 video responses to sit through. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm only on Oasis Risings, four, five, and six day, and everybody else is like day 16. Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind. Anyways. The uh, guys that I thought were the hardest to paint, this Mornfang Brown, were the, um, the belt on this gas mask guy. And it goes all the way around, so the belt in the back. And also, here we go, Uncle Vanya aiming. He's got a, a belt and pouches here. Um, well, this guy wasn't so hard. It was just his straps I was having a hard time with. But let's move on to the next and the final part of this video, <clears throat> which is getting the gold. Now the gold, or the brass, it is all gonna be done in Rune Lord Brass, and this is what really gives Vostroyans their unique look, I think, makes them all pop. So, common areas on all Vostroyans that have the gold are the shoulder pads, so I like to go over them first because they, they are the most, uh, they're the brightest, easiest to paint. You could start with the, the last gun, but I found that if you do that, it uh, takes a little bit longer, it's a little bit more draining. So I think pa painting these shoulder pads first makes, makes the model really pop, gives you a lot of good motivation to continue. So those are the shoulder pads. Now, a lot of these guys also have elbow pads. Just about all of them have two. This Uncle Vanya aiming has only one. So we'll paint the elbow pad. Rune Lord Brass is one of those paints from Games Workshop that needs to be thinned down just a little bit with water. It's a little too thick to put on by itself. If you put too much water though, what will tend to happen is it gets too transparent and then it will spread out everywhere, places you don't want it to go. But all by itself, it's a little bit too, too heavy. <clears throat> um, also common places for gold would be belt buckles, like this big V. Um, little details, like the skull. All of these guys also have canteens. Many of them have grenades. So for the canteens, we paint the Aquila, or not the Aquila, but the winged skull in bronze or brass, I mean. And for the grenades, we paint the little pins. There we go. Okay, finally, a lot of them have, uh, on their coats, they have lots of 
interesting looking adornments like this arrows, these are arrows. Basically anything that's a raised surface on their coats will get the, the uh, Rune Lord Brass. Now some of them, let's take a look at, someone asked for an example. Some of them have chainmail on their front. And the way we paint the border of the chainmail is we paint it with Runelord Brass, like this guy here. So because it's bordering the armor, it's pretty thick, so you want to make sure you get underneath. So if a model, if somebody picks up the model and looks at it from underneath, they see that you didn't shortchange them on the paint job. Little tips like this. I think make the difference between just a model that's tabletop standard and something that can go for a little bit better of a price tag if you're ever willing to sell your Vestroyans like I am planning on doing. For reals, I'm gonna sell them. Okay, and then here's a grenade, so we're gonna paint the pin, the Aquila. Don't worry if your canteen has some weird splotches on it or it's not fully painted because we haven't really gone over it yet. We're going to paint the the winged skulls on the canteens first so that we get we have something that we can clean up. So yeah, a lot of your guys were will have these chainmail tops. Um, also, the last thing that is common with all Imperial guys, or Vastroyans, oh, um, something that they might have, first of all, let's go over this, is the winged skull on their big poofy helmet. What are the guys that wear the big helmets? Or the big hats? Like, the old guys that wear hats and have meetings? Elks Club? Moose Lodge? Some, <laughs> what are they called? I don't remember. Oh, really? <clears throat> um, oh, on this guy, yeah, another thing you want to make sure you get is all of the gauntlets. So I'll take you through this guy first because he's got the different gauntlet. Basically, the fingers are silver. Everything else is going to be gold. So you've got a couple of different styles. Like, let's look at this guy. Fingers are silver. Oh, I don't know if I got these in his right hand but the rest of the gauntlet is gold. The plate covering the hand, the bindings around the forearm. Oh, see, and I missed this little pouch right over there, Morn Fang Brown. So easy, there's so much stuff that you can miss because there's so much detail on these guys and they're all the same. Like I said, they're the same sculpts, same seven sculpts over and over and over, but they're not like Cadians where it's, the sculpts are so simple that they're always the same. And I kind of like that. It gives you more to do as a painter. So the gauntlets. The plates covering the hand and the binding on the wrist. Let's see if we can find a different here. This guy has the same kind of gauntlet, but he's got straps on the outside. So uh, we're going to paint the straps in later, but for now we're just going to paint the entire and I, I'm pretty sure gauntlet is not the correct term because gauntlet is mainly for the hand and these armor pieces seem to cover like a good bit of the forearm. And you always want to make sure that when you're painting the armor you look at it from all the different angles so that you can get it from the back and make sure that you're painting up the rim entirely accurately. So I'll show you this one more elbow pad. Goes all the way around. Then look at it from the top down. And try to paint the, the edges there. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, now let's talk about the gun. The gun, the gun, the gun. Mm-hmm. 
So the parts that you're going to start with are here the base of the gun gets a little bit of the gold or the brass. So all of the guns, all of the last guns have this bottom part. So let's look at this guy, he's holding it a little bit higher. You can see that the bottom is flat, so it's a nice flat surface area. And then you've got this edge and then you've got this one little part that pops up and it's like a little point. So you just paint that back around this side and to the back. Boom. Okay. Then let's go back to our first test model here. Above the magazine the power pack is another part that I like to paint in Rune Lord Brass to show the differentiation between or to show the difference in um, materials between this is the power pack and then right above it is the actual body of the, the laser. I think in the Games Workshop models they painted all silver and then they use the gold for the, the bindings here but my, I, I do mine just a little bit different and I find it makes the guns pop more look a little bit cooler you always want to also turn it to the back because on the back side they paint or they, they have sculpted just about the identical detail so don't just paint the front and forget that there's a back side too at the top there's a scope a little scope and it should be silver for most of it except for at the front. I like to paint this gold so it just has a little bit of an accent. And then on the back whatever this piece is I always like to give the the uh, edging a little bit of brass as well. When you get to the front of the gun there's this brass piece right at the front. Try to leave the silver of the barrel and the little bit barrel right underneath showing though. Just want to make sure your brush is nice and sharp, the tip. And we're painting the housing right around the barrel, or whatever that's called. I bet all of you military gun owners and enthusiasts out there are just like screaming at me right now. That's not what it's called. Sorry, I don't own a gun. I don't know what they're called, they just play with little metal men. On the front, you've got winged skulls, so these are also going to get <clears throat> the brass, Moon Lord brass. So what I like to do is paint the front of it, to make sure I've got paint going on all the front part, surface area. And then I like to look at it from the top, because it's really easy to forget that you can see, you can see that shine from the top, so you want to make sure you hit it. All right. So I'm going to get all the brass done on all my guys and then we'll wrap up at the very end of this video. Uh, one thing that I want to show you is you want your Mechanicus Standard Grey <clears throat> standing by Mechanicus Standard Grey because that is going to be the color of your canteen and the parts under your red coat. So this guy here has got his coat open in the front. His undergarments are gonna get this layer of gray. It might thin out. If it does, just let it dry and then go back over it again. Make sure you shake your pot up before so that all the pigment goes to the top. And then you're also gonna use Mechanicus Standard Gray on the canteen. Just paint all around. I forgot about two more pieces with the brass on the back because they're on the back side of the model. So you've got armor pieces, the rifle. On the back, most of these guys have knife, uh, knife holsters or holsters with the knives in them. So you paint just all of the binding areas in Rune Lord Brass. If you happen to have your knife in the holster, then all the the hilt, the, um, the eagle head at the bottom, gets brass. Now let's take a look at the guy with it on his bayonet. So if you are painting a guy with it on his bayonet, just do the same thing. Paint the eagle head, paint the hilt, 
or the uh, what are the handguard thing this is. And that's it. You'll probably be painting this at the same time that you paint the front of the barrel. So what I like to do is paint the eagle head, then just work my way to the blade. So I'll paint this part of the binding of the rifle, this part. Housing for the barrel. And the side, the back, the front, the other side. And then the top of the barrel. Okay, so that's what your your bayonet should look like. I think I got a little bit of brass on the blade, so I'll go back over that with some lead belcher. Now I'm gonna talk about the last part of the model that needs the brass paint, and that is on the back where you've got the power plant for the rebreathers. So, I like to paint the bindings of the right tank, like the air tank or whatever this is, with Rune Lord Brass, just like that. So again, I'm painting it as if I'm looking at the model straight on. Then I look down from the top because a lot of times the detail pops out more than you think it does. Ta-da! And let's look at our <clears throat> gas mask boys. I like to paint just about all of the gas mask except for the eye lenses in brass. This guy also has, um, so yeah, even his grill. This guy also has like a collar, so I like to paint the collar. And the winged skull on his chest plate right there. I'll go back and clean up the chains later. And on the back, for all of these guys who have gas masks, they have a little connector to their rebreather unit here. So, you're gonna paint the connector in brass. And then again, just going down, painting the binding here and here. We'll talk a little bit about this uh, special weapons because they're definitely a lot different. For the uh, flamer here, just take your Rune Lord Brass and slap it all over the um, nozzle here. Then just pull it back to the binding on the front. Then everything else is kind of like the last gun. If there are bindings, like here on the side for the Promethium tank, then you're gonna paint them in Rune Lord Brass. Also, going back further, um, you can either paint these attachment parts in brass, sometimes I like to do them, the ones that attach to the wires, or leave them, but basically anytime there's like a, there's like a strap of something, metal wrapped around something else, I like to paint the inside metal silver and then this, the wraparound part in, in this gold color. Let's get the binding here. And finally, we're going to look at the Promethium tank sitting on his back. So same thing, it's the main part underneath is silver, so we're just gonna strap this brass on over the top. And it creates a, a nice looking contrast between the yellow of the brass and the silver. Okay, so that's the flamer. The grenade launcher, a little bit different. Uh, simpler, but then you've got all the, like the main part is simpler, but then you've got the rest of it. Oh, also for the flamer guy, what I also like to do is paint the whole thing. Except again, the rims of the eye lenses, paint the whole thing in brass.
Where was I? Grenade launcher. Okay. Whoever made this grenade launcher really, really loves eagles. Where they told him, put eagles on it or you're fired. So he's, you've got like an eagle in the back brace here. You've got an eagle on the front. And the emperor loves his eagles. And the emperor loves when you paint his eagles gold. So we're painting it in brass. So those are the first two. Anytime you see a golden Aquila or a winged skull, it's going to be painted in Rune Lord Brass, as well as any bindings like this. Again, we're showing the, the contrast, like this here, and like that, the, the difference in the materials. Okay, and then for your rounds, your grenade rounds, uh, remember, we painted the, the the heads in silver, so we're going to paint the rest of the casing in bronze. And a lot of these are kind of like belted together, so it might be hard for you to find where the belt is and where the where the head and the actual casing is. So just paint the whole thing, just try to leave the silver head for now, and then we'll paint the belt in Mornfang Brown later. Oh, and for this guy as well, we're gonna Rune Lord Brass's face, his gas mask. <laughs> then we're gonna get across the front too. Some of these guys, like this guy, you can see he's got a chainmail coat that uh, kind of match uh, clasps in the center. So I'm gonna paint the center. Boop, 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 boop. Golden Eagles. I have to show you guys also, before we, before I, I cut off and let you go and do all that and work on my own, some of these guys have different cuffs on their jackets. Like the grenade launcher guy and like Uncle Vanya just standing and posing and looking awesome here. So if you also are painting sergeants, you're going to need to do this too because all the sergeants have this as well. They, they have these cuffs that are rolled up like this. So the color you're going to use to paint them is Sandry Dust. And we paint the front of it like that. Then we look behind Make sure that we get every area of the surface. And then usually if the uh, they have like a little cufflink there, if it's just a skull, then I'll paint it silver. So we'll go back over and paint that in silver. Or uh, you could also paint it in Rune Lord Brass. I found that when you're painting on top of something like Sandry Dust though, that's more of a yellowish color, then the brass doesn't show up as well. So I think I'm going to stick with silver for the two skulls on the cuffs. So you only really have to worry about these details if you're painting the sergeant or this one guy, or if you've got grenade launchers in your squad, because these are the three guys that have these cuffs. All right, I'm gonna uh, cut off now and go and do that. So we'll see you guys uh, at the, I, I think I'm actually gonna take a, this is gonna take a while. So I'm, I'm gonna wrap up here. Uh, the video is running a little bit long already. So um, we will see you in the next video when we are gonna get on to uh, final details and then the washes and highlights. Latest players.